My talk is about the potential of translanguaging at the initial stage of L3 learning, and I've brought data from two L3 classrooms. By L3, I refer to the second foreign language, but you might also refer to any other further foreign language um, that a learner is currently acquiring, even um, a bilingual learner, for example. At first, I want to give you an impression of the data I'm dealing with. Um, these data were collected in uh, France in an um, L3 German classroom among eight graders. So the pupils you will listen to are about 14 years old. Um, So what we can observe here um, are various kinds of production transfer. We have um, two borrowings. The first one is based on the L1 French proposition um, that is phonologically adapted to the target language German um, by saying proposition. Um, the second borrowing um, is again based on the L1 French uh, libre um, in the sense of free or do you have time? Um, uh, spare time, um, and this is morphologically adapted to the L3 to German um, um, in the ending. And then you have ex um, two examples of spontaneous um, translations um, where um, the learner uses you um, in English, so L2 English, and finally comes up with a target word, um, and the same with Je and Ja. Now listen um, to the other, the second class. That is a class um, of learners of French that um, are pupils that grow up in Germany. Okay, okay, okay. Ich habe ein Problem, wie du dich fühlst. Mein Problem ist, Adam in the first example is looking for the target word for um, Donnerstag, that's Thursday, and Augustin is able to help him out. You can call this switch an exolingual switch, that is um, a switch that really deals with learning the target language and with um, discussing its features. And you might call uh, this a language-related episode that is initiated by the L1 German. But then there are lots of other pragmatic functions in my data. Um, so in the second sample you can observe two discourse-related switches to the L1 German, again. We have um, regulating code switching when learners leave behind the completion of the task in order to discuss how they proceed. Um, Agatha in the beginning is concerned with turn-taking issues when she states you should start and Alexander reassures himself of what has to be done by um, translating, reading aloud the assignment um, in, uh, again, the L1 German. So pupils here had to describe a problem and um, to describe or to also describe their feelings. Here is the outline of my talk. After defining um, two important arguments that share lots of common ground with translanguaging, I will present the design and results of my PhD study conducted um, in two different classrooms, as well as further prospects. You can nowadays rather optimistically speak of a real a multilingual turn in foreign language education. Although we look back on um, 30 years of research in theory building and didactics of plurilingualism, little has been applied in the classroom practices so far. However, three recent evolutions might be considered as breakthrough. First, the new Cepha Companion volume includes descriptive scales for plurilingual competence. Second, at least within the German academic discourse, you have voices like Reimann who pleads for an enlightenment 
meaning that productive competencies and the learner's repertoire have been too much neglected so far. And finally, we observe an opening um, of the translanguage discourse itself for foreign language issues. So the first argument that I want to make is that um, of plurilingual competence. Um, it's a notion that originated in French foreign language didactics in the 90s, and it has been um, largely disseminated by the Sefer. Um, it is rooted in Heim's notion of communicative competence, by which Heim's understood a competence for use and not for grammar. It is viewed as distinctive competence based on um, original language practices um, and a competence that develops throughout the whole lifespan. Although you could apply these two criteria to L3 learners, um, L3 learners themselves do not perceive themselves as polylingual, even of those that have grown up bilingually, as we know from um, several attitude studies. In order to develop a self-concept as plurilingual, they would need the experience of um, plurilingual practices, or you can say so, translanguaging practices inside school. Such practices are not new, neither to SLA nor bilingualism research. Um, there is a big body of research on communication strategies in SLA, whose major contributions, um, or some of them uh, at least, are summarized here in grey. And um, they consist, or the major contributions consist, to my mind, in the distinction between avoidance and achievement behavior and between content manipulating and conceptual strategies and form manipulating linguistic strategies. Interlingual transfer is where SLA meets bilingualism research. Um, the contributions of bilingualism research are put here in white. Um, for example, um, uh, in this kind of research, uh, different categories for code mixing have been pushed forward, and especially an interpretation of code switching as contextualization cue for discourse or participant-related issues. Or um, for exolingual ones, that is, learner-specific ones, such as negotiation of meaning or language episodes. In my aim to elicit these transfer-based practices, um, I had to take psycholinguistic transfer factors into account, such as um, language typology or psychotypology, um, an L2 threshold competence, and um, the onset in the L3. So I sampled 14-year-old um, pupils schooled in France and Germany after four years of L2 English and two years of L3 German and French instruction. Social linguistic transfer factors became important while choosing a research strategy. I opted for a qualitative experimentation by which I could modify the field and explore the translanguaging practices um, of L3 learners. In order to manipulate situational features, such as topic or task type, I used three different tasks, or as Kleining puts it, a segmentation technique. Since there was no pre-task activity, the field was modified by removing an important element, the preparation, the lexical or structural preparation, and thus reducing the field. And last, a group of learners performed a two languages task for which they were explicitly asked to activate um, their L2 English, which represents an unusual objection to their L3 lesson. So these learners accomplished the task first in the L2 English and only afterwards in their L3. The two classes were thus divided in an exploratory group performing a two languages task, that is to say first um, in English, and a comparison group um, only performing in the L3. Both groups, or for both groups, I gathered L3 um, performance data, um, as well as um, retrospection data in the L1. Students were here asked to discuss in groups of four pupils um, L2, L3 item similarities that they observed, as well as strategy use. 
A corpus linguistic as well as type building analysis ran over the L3 performance data. Why the descriptive corpus linguistic analysis has shown corpus and uh, also group specific similarities with regards to the exploratory and comparison group. The type um, building analysis, more interpretive in nature, um, rather focused on inter individually updated profiles of plurilingual competence. And by the way, um, retrospection data um, has been a key in doing so. So um, speaking uh, of the couples linguistic analysis, production transfer was generally um, more L2 than L1 based. Um, even in case of fewer typological similarity, that is to say um, between L2 English and L3 French. Also, in this case, um, pupils draw on the L2 English. Also, constitutive code switching, which may be considered as stretches of borrowings for more than one word, um, was rather L2 than L1 based, whereas in all other pragmatic functions, code switching was almost exclusively L1 based, with the exception perhaps um, of participant-related uh, switching, but all the exolingual and regulating switches, uh, so the learner-specific and um, the discourse-related switches, were L1-based. So there is strong empirical evidence for the role function model um, in my study, which in contrast to Williams and Hammerberg um, is a cross-sectional study that has been conducted in a formal learning context um, with um, with youngsters, uh, with adolescents. Um, the role function model states that in L3 performance, L2 works in a supplier and L1 in an instrumental role. Furthermore, two languages task might um, arise pupils' awareness of instances of L2-based production transfer. Um, since there has been uh, less L1-based production transfer and less L2-based constitutive code switching in the exploratory group. With regards to the type billing analysis, I observed that some learners made particularly negative comments during the retrospection. Um, uh, comments about their own L3 performance or the task as such, and that the same learners must have interpreted um, the communicative situation as a monolingual one, as they made no use of production transfer or code switching um, during L3 performance, and as they produced very short L3 texts below average. So by less drawing on the plurilingual repertoire, um, these learners also made less use of the task as L3 learning opportunity. I thus found four types of updated profiles of plurilingual competence. Um, depending on the interpretation of the communicative situation with which the learners came up. For the distinction between these types, the frequency of production transfer and the type of code switching as well as um, L3 text length um, were decisive. The plurilingual exolingual profile is particularly interesting. You can see it um, above on the right side. Um, as learners here made use of production transfer and code switching in exolingual and regulating functions. In comparison to the monolingual exolingual profile, these learners draw more on their linguistic knowledge in previously learned languages, but they do so in a very target um, language-oriented way, as there is almost no use of constitutive code switching, whereas in the plurilingual profile everything seems permitted and learners use other languages over really long stretches of um, L3 conversation in order to complete the task. So an important finding is um, that these profiles um, are standardized interactively, which means that um, both learners negotiate the profile they are interested in, that they show each other or display um, which profile they want to update. And um, the prolingual exolingual profile is of particular interest um, for L3 education. It should replace um, the native um, speaker um, ideology. 
Um, Because by encouraging L3 learners to update this kind of profile, you could aim also, you could also aim at acquisitional goals by using production transfer, especially um, uh, while you join um, a retrospection on um, the observed phenomena. Um, Learners could restructure uh, their interlanguages in the different languages. Um, and might increase potential for um, intake. And um, also uh, learners uh, by using exolingual um, L1 code switching um, uh, produce modified output um, and um, scaffold um, each other's productions. And um, in this profile, you could, of course, also um, aim at educative uh, goals, uh, that is, experiences of translanguaging enhancing self-perception as upcoming plurilingual. So, um, with regards to future research, there is a need for more process-oriented studies on L3 performances, may they be written or spoken, um, as well as studies on learners' communication awareness, that is, their um, capacity to distinguish between different um, pragmatic functions um, in um, translanguaging practices. Third, we also need um, attitude studies on different kinds of tasks promoting um, pedagogical translanguaging in the L3 classroom. With regards to curriculum design, it will be interesting to observe how the national policies will pick up um, the um, complementary volume, the CEFA complementary volume. Hopefully, the partial competence of um, exploring um, and exploiting the plurilingual repertoire will be considered at um, um, middle schools, um, as it allows learners to become aware of their plurilingual competence as um, separate and original competence. If you are interested in these issues, you might also be interested in our um, trilingual book project, bringing together the notions of translanguaging, plurilingual competence, and tertiary language didactics, um, for which we are planning a launching event um, next year. So in this case, please uh, feel free to contact me and thank you for listening.